there's a difference between how light and dark a color is and how bright or dull a color is, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. All right, we're going to start with uh, doing some mixing. Now, in general, if you mix around the color wheel, you will maintain brightness. And if you mix across the color wheel, you will achieve a change in value, but the sacrifice is that things will become duller. And there are times when you want to do that and times when you don't want to do that. So here's the first example. I'm taking yellow and alizarin crimson. I mix them together and I make an orange. I've gone around the color wheel in order to make a darker value square. Now I'm going to go across the color wheel. These are the complementary colors. Yellow and violet are opposites on the color wheel. So I'm using them to achieve a shift in value. And you can see that that's a duller color. I'm going to look at them through the value finder. And I saw that the one on the right is darker than the one on the left. I want to mix a color that is exactly the same value as, um, so that they're equal to demonstrate this point. So I have to go back to the drawing board, which I did, <laughs> and I mixed up a darker value square by using yellow, that alizarin red again, and a tiny, I can't even describe how tiny an amount of ultramarine blue. And that time I got a match. So I can match the squares in terms of value, how light or dark they are. They are the same value, the same lightness or darkness. But as you can see, they're very different colors. One is bright and one is dull. And that is because I went around the color wheel to shift the value in the first square. And I went across the color wheel to shift the color on the second square. All right, let's do that again, because it took me a really long time to understand this. Maybe forever. All right, there's alizarin crimson again. And uh, let's see what happens. All right, alizarin crimson and blue, because what I'm doing now is I'm going around the color wheel, leaving red and going into blue territory, and there is a violet square. So I've changed the value from, so this is a darker value, this violet is a darker value than either one of the two colors I mixed it from. Now I'm going to go across the color wheel. The opposite of alizarin uh, crimson is going to be, um, a green, and I use Viridian as the green on my palette. So I'm going to mix that up, and I will end up with a violet that is the same value. And this is what I really wanted to show in the first example, but just, just off of it. There is a, val a violet. So both of those larger squares are violet. They're equal in value, but you can see that one is brighter and one is, is duller. I almost said darker. There's a confusion between brightness and dullness and lightness and darkness. <laughs> and there are times when you want to maintain brightness, mixing around the color wheel, and then there are other times when you want to go for a duller look. All right, so just to demonstrate it so that you have something in your head that you can remember from this video is if you're mixing around the color wheel, you will maintain brightness. You can shift value this, this way but then maintain brightness. However, if you're going to mix across the color wheel, you will also shift value, which is your goal in mixing paints, but paint will be duller. So that is my very brief explanation of uh, brightness and dullness. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.